Hello, my name is Sean Lacey of Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy and this is a short video on repeated measures ANOVA and linear mixed models in RStudio. When I use RStudio for repeated measures ANOVA, I often use the EZ ANOVA function and the AOV underscore car function. Um, I'd, and I to and fro between them and I'll show you why I to and fro between them now in a few minutes. And then when I'm looking at doing a linear uh, mixed models, I'd often find that I'd actually use the function in the fourth point here, the LMER test function, as opposed to the LME function. But I just said for the purposes of this video, I'd actually show a script to do both because I know that both functions are actually quite popular. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to look at just setting up a data frame for a random uh, set of numbers in our studio. So it's going to be 90 participants. Uh, three, uh, three parallel groups or so 30 participants per group, so per arm. I'm going to randomly uh, select some numbers, so but I want them to be reproducible, so that's why I'm setting the seed here. And the, so in this case here, uh, I'm just going to set, look at kind of where there's going to be three time points. So uh, participants are measured at three different, uh, three different time points. And I'm going to kind of purposely look at where the time is increasing. So the measurements are increasing over time. Okay. So that's what's going on here with this. So I'll just kind of set that up here for a minute here like this. And then I obviously put in all that information as a data frame. And this is what I get off. I'll just give you a quick review of that just to see, look, what's happening here with this. So what I have here in this data frame is I have an ID, which is obviously quite important for the repeated measures aspect. And obviously when it comes to linear mixed models, that's going to be important because that's going to be the random effect. There's a group in measurement. So this is the between subjects factor. And then there's where participants are measured three time points. So that's going to be then where there's a within subjects factor. Um, then all I just do here is just, I suppose, set, set up the variables as factors, define the levels to the factor. Uh, to do the analysis, the data as it is at the moment in the bottom left hand side of the screen is in a wide uh, format. We need it to be in a long format. So I'm just going to use the gather function in the tidy or package, set another data property. And then I'm just going to actually just do a graph. So we can just have a picture of what's going on. And this is what we get over on the right hand side of my screen. So we can see here. So in this case here, there's two factors. So there's a uh, between subjects factor, which is group. When we look at the box plot down on the bottom right hand side of the screen, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference uh, in the groups. OK, so may potentially there will be uh, no kind of main effect around around the grouping factor. And uh, when you look at time, so that's going to be the within subjects factor. Um, there, the measurements do appear to what, what we're measuring uh, appears to be increasing over time. So that would you'd imagine that there's going to be a time effect. And that increase over time is consistent across the groups. So you'd imagine then that there's going to be no interaction effect, no simple main effect. So that you'd, the result for the kind of the simple main effect will be more likely statistically insignificant when we're looking at this. Okay, now the purpose of this video isn't really too much about the interpretation of, of the stats, it's just more. I suppose just demonstrating the, the various functions that we would use and maybe well, I just want to, I suppose, show the logic of why you would use more, uh, one over the other at times, okay? So the first one I would use, which is one I would have, would have been my go-to function for the repeated measures ANOVA would have been the EZ ANOVA function, which is part of the EZ package. Uh, I, I really liked using this one. Uh, so uh, I'll actually just explain the structure here. So I just specify the data frame specify the response measurement, which I called measure would look. So when I put the three time points, when I stacked them on top of each other, I just called the actual measurement measure just for the sake of it. Uh, the within subjects ID is going to be called ID. The between subjects factors group, the within subjects factors time. I'm saying type equals three. I didn't have to do that, but type equals three is obviously the, the type of ANOVA that we would use when if you had an unbalanced design. So that's why I just look, I generally would use type equals three myself. And I like using this one here. I'll just run that, uh, load the library and then run off the function. The reason I like doing this is I like the way um, I can get the result for sphericity. So this tells me whether or not uh, sphericity is assumed. In this case, sphericity is assumed. So I can go up here to the to read off the, the I suppose, the F ratios that we have up here. If the sphericity wasn't assumed when it comes to the boolean subjects factor and the simple main effect, of, we'd have the greenhouse geyser result here or the Hunfeld result. Again, the purpose of this is not necessarily about interpreting the results. It's more the purpose of this video, sorry, is not so much about interpreting the results. It's more just about demonstrating the script in order to do the, use these particular functions um, around repeated measures ANOVA and linear mixed models. They, so I often like to using this, the EZ ANOVA function. The reason I'd like doing it is because I feel it just gives a very good kind of picture of what's going on, that there's sphericity. 
And then depending on the results of sparsity, I'll read the results up in the ANOVA output above or read the results in the greenhouse geyser. Now, obviously, when it comes to the between subjects factor, which is group, obviously that doesn't have sparsity doesn't uh, have an impact on that. So that's why there's no P, uh, the P value for that is only up with the ANOVA. That sparsity is only linked with the within subjects factor. So I'd often like this, uh, the EZNO function, because I feel it just gives a full picture of what's going on. The downside of using it is um, if you find that you have a statistically significant result using your ANOVA, then obviously your next step then is to do a pairwise comparison. And there's no, I, I could I often, I suppose I couldn't find a nice function or a function that would align well with using the EZNOVA or use the output from the EZNOVA. Um, essentially, I want to look at using an estimated marginal means and I couldn't find how to map that to an EZ and OVA output. So often what I find I do in practice is I, I often find I would use the EZ and OVA because it gives me the full picture of what's going on. But then I would run off the, the ANOVA again using the AOV underscore car function. Now, the reason I would do this is the output that I'd get from this or the more the name that I'd give the output, which I'm calling here in this case would be option two. I could do estimated marginal means on that. Okay, so I can do the pairwise comparison and that will be another video I'm going to do after this one as I'm going to look at one just around the, the EM means function in, in our studio and just kind of, I suppose, the various um, things that you, we can kind of get, uh, get as a result of that and maybe how to kind of format the results and so on. So that'll be for a separate video. Uh, but I suppose the reason, again, to come back to this one, the reason I'd find that I'd use the AOV underscore car function is it aligns well then to do a pairwise comparison afterwards. Now, the purpose of this video isn't the pairwise comparison, but if that if something you're interested in, then that's kind of, this function is quite good to align with that. Okay, so this is using the Apex uh, package, then this AOV underscore car function. So the response measurement, the interaction, so between groups, so the between subjects factor and the within subjects factor. And this here then is where you're kind of, you're stating your random effects to, to a certain extent here, okay? And uh, you can see the comment that I just said here that it aligns well with the uh, estimated margin means. If I just widen this one up here, you can just see the comment that I said for the EZ ANOVA. It's a good test for the output of the sphericity. When we do this one here, the Apex one that I load the library did, when we do this one here, you can see that the output is going to be the same. If I just scroll up, I'll, what I look at here is I'll just look at the p-values very, very quickly. So this is 2.24, obviously, well, so 0.24, sorry, 0.224, that's what this is. Uh, if you think of the scientific notation, this is obviously, this p-value here is quite small. And then if you look at this, this is going to be 0 0.265. So that's what the, the p-values are here. And if I scroll down here, you can see, look, that we're actually getting the exact same p-values, 0 0.224, 0 0.265. And obviously the middle one then is very small. So you can look at mapping it and you'll see that it maps well. It basically is, tell is telling us here, spiracy is assumed. And so that's why it's giving us this output. What I just, I suppose, feel is lacking at times from this output, even though it's, it's obviously has its use, is it just doesn't kind of give the other kind of the other output, okay? That if that could be something that you're interested in, the Hunt felt, the greenhouse geyser, the F ratio uh, results and stuff like that, it'll only give you one aspect of it, okay? But I'd often use it nonetheless because it was a means to get to the estimated marginal means, okay? So, the so there are two functions just in relation to doing a repeated measures in Nova in our studio. The other one then that I find that I'd often use, and I suppose this is where I'd use these is. If I find that I have a couple of random effects or I might have a covariate that I find the LME or function quite good for this. Now, I, I generally actually don't use the LME function. I generally more often use the LME or function, but I just felt if I was kind of if for the video, if I'm giving two kind of functions for repeated measures, I might as well give two functions for linear mixed models. So this one here is one I don't use too much myself. Uh, but it, it is uh, obviously it does work and we'll see that it's going to give us the same results that we have up here so it's going to be the lme function within the nlme package so um response measurement you state your between subjects factor which are your interaction um, and your within subjects factor and then you state look what your random effect is and obviously just how the random effect has been stated is slightly different to up here and i suppose that's why i kind of nearly wanted to do this video as well is just to kind of show the different ways the different kind of S was the subtle differences in the script depending on what function is being used. And you can see here, I'll just run this off here, that the output we get back is the same. If I just focus on the p-values, 0.224, look, 0.224, the p-value here is very small, and then 0 0.265, 0 0.265. So we're seeing that we are actually getting the same results, okay? Um, 
And obviously, again, if, if we wanted to move on to do estimated marginal means and stuff like that, obviously that, that would be where you take the result that you have here, which I'm calling option three, and you would do your estimated marginal means and that or whatever type of pairwise comparison you want to do. So that's, uh, that's quite a good one. Uh, the one that I would use more of, I suppose, is the LMER function, but people vary between which ones they would use. You'll see that the structure to this is very similar. The one thing that's different is just how the random effect has been stated. So obviously the random effect is the ID measurement. So it's your participants is essentially what, what you're trying to control for and you're kind of control the of that variation. So that's going to be a random effect. Um, I like doing this one because I find it's uh, quite good for when I have multiple random effects. I just feel that the script is easier. Even if you look up here, the script for the random effect is just a bit clunkier than the script down here for the random effect. And I suppose that's why I made one of the reasons I'd use it. And the reason the linear mixed model, I'd often use linear mixed models as opposed to repeated measures is I find them quite good if, when there's covariates in the model as well. Um, but again, for this video, it's more just to kind of show the script that you would use. So I'll just run that off here. And we're going to get this output here is actually, sorry, here, I give it a name of DEL for some reason there. I don't know what I was thinking there, sorry. So ANOVA option four. And you can see that the results we're getting back here, if you just look at the p-values again, 0.224, this one's very small, so that's the time one, and then obviously this is 0.265. So I suppose I haven't necessarily spoken too much about what this means. The first one is looking at the between subjects effect, which is group, which is saying that there's no difference, or we fa fail to reject the null hypothesis, which the null hypothesis is that there's no difference. That makes sense. Time, there, when you look at the box plot, there is an increase over time, and that's what we're seeing here. The p-value is small if we're comparing it to a 5% level of significance or even to a 1% level of significance, you can see that the p-value is very small. And then when you look in the interaction here, you can see that the p-value in this case is greater than 0 0.05. So there would be no interaction effect. Um, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that there is no interaction effect. And that would make sense when we look at the box pad over here. Again, the, the, the purpose of this video isn't too much to dwell on the p-values or anything like that. It is really more just to demonstrate the script. The last thing here, and is, this is just, I suppose, I think it's quite clear cut, that all these models are aligning well with each other, but just may, I just said, I just pulled them all together, the various models. So this is just where I'm extracting the F, uh, the F ratios and the p-values from each model. So my line 45 there is looking at the F ratio and the p-values from the EZ out output. The line 46 is looking at the F ratio and the p-values from the AFX output. Then the next line is the LME, the output from the LME um, package and then the last one is the LME or and then I'm just pulling all this information together or creating it as a data frame and the real, just the reason for doing that is just to kind of see the output here and you can just see when you look at or between subjects factor or within subjects factor in the interaction the F ratio is, and then repeating it for the p-values you can see that they're all aligning to be the same okay and I think that's really what I wanted to just kind of show in this uh, video is just how the repeated measures ANOVA and the linear mixed models can be aligned uh, now it obviously depends on your the variables and your covariates and so on like that, but just more showing look, the, the script that you would use, especially around the random effect, because there's obviously little subtle differences between the function when you're looking at the random effect. And that's it. Look, that's the this uh, this video. If you if you like the video and you find it useful, then if, please uh, feel free to like and uh, to share. Or uh, if you're interested in maybe more videos uh, from myself, then if you subscribe to this channel, you'll get updates on when the next videos uh, will be uploaded. Okay, so uh, that's it for now. All the best.